talked about in round one. It's a Sloan revival. So uh, in Toronto, there hasn't been a lot of Sloan lately. Uh, I think it's because when, when it's been a long time in between sets, there's a bit more of an experimental period. People just start trying a new stuff. But when it comes to tournaments, I think uh, Derek has proved that uh, Sloan, if people aren't ready for it, can come as a, cause a very unpleasant surprise. So he's got a uh, pretty typical Sloan ace ball. Uh, full of lots of TIE Fighters and, uh, yeah, with the uh, BFF combo of G Colonel Jendon and Merrick Steele. And then on Owen's side, we have, it's a Radis, right? No, it's General Dodonna with an MC-75 Ordnance Cruder. Uh, damage Control Officer, ECM, uh, so very defensive version of an MC-75. And uh, supporting that, he's got uh, two Corvette A's with... TRC is one with Janus Light, uh, and then he has a Hammerhead, and his one, two, three, four. Yeah, his fifth ship is a GR75 with Comsnet. Looks like he has a bunch of uh, YT2400s. Is that Han Solo? Yeah, it with is. Han Solo as the ace. Yeah, three YTs and Han Solo. So actually, um, Han Solo is um, a secret weapon against. Uh, it's a secret weapon against Sloan Aces, and the reason for that is uh, the grit prevents the lockdown. Uh, it's actually generally better against uh, Sloan balls that tend to have more generic TIE Fighters, just because they don't have the scatter token to lock down. But uh, he can be annoying enough because he, he himself is hard to lock down. He's like a cavalry unit that he, um, uh, when, the, when the squadron balls engage each other, he kind of skirts around the edges, picking off the weak links. Uh, so we're going to see how um, how effective he is going to be in this game, though. But the power of Owen's list is in his ships versus Derek's list, which is mostly... I mean, he does have a hard hitter in, in his Avenger, but he is uh, a significant amount of his firepower is going to come from his slow aces as well. So Travis uh, went to go find out what the objective is. Looks like the objective is Contested Outpost, and Derek is player number two. Um, contested Outpost is uh, generally a good one for lists that have a huge tanky heavy hitter ship and uh, doubly so if you have a lot of squadrons because um, any ship that tries to get in and get that objective can get greeted by a swarm of fighters taking it down. And if you have something like an Avenger to back up uh, Sloan's ability, well then it becomes doubly uh, important to avoid that uh, station. So this, this is an interesting setup with his Corvettes. It looks like based on the way Owen has deployed his two Corvettes, he's going to try to come around on either side of the contested outpost. Um, force Derek to commit to one side, perhaps. Looks like he's left a bunch of space in the middle for probably his MC-75 to uh, push, push up through the center. Derek deploying his Quasar on the right side of the screen. And that Quasar is at going at speed two, so pretty fast actually, especially for a for an objective like con contested outpost. So instead of that MC75, he instead puts the hammerhead in the center of the deployment zone. Uh, going at speed three, that hammerhead does have Geralt's honor. With the Donna, it can be a nasty combo. Very aggressive setup. Usually when I play contested outpost, I I go at speed one with the uh, idea that turn one I can be, uh, even at speed one I can be at distance one of the station and force my opponent to come to me. But it looks like uh, both these players have a different idea in mind. They're going to they're gonna crash into each other, looks like. And Owen uh, actually uses his MC-75 as a flanker coming in on the side. So it will be interesting to see how he develops his board situation from his starting position. Owen's fighters have their work cut out for them. Uh, four YT-2400s are decent workhorse units. Sorry, uh, three YT-2400s are decent workhorse units, but uh, without the laser focus of something like a Sloan Squadron, um, while they do have four blue dice, I don't see a lot of um, variance reduction like Torn Fire or anything like that. So uh, I think it's just a matter of when Owen's squadron ball goes down 
and how much time he can buy his ships. So Owen starts off with a nav command using it this turn on his Geralt's Honor. Hammerhead Corvettes have a weird, <laughs> they have a weird spear ch speed chart at uh, speed three. Uh, the first two joints are the ones that have the one tick and the third one goes straight. But since he navigated, he got that extra tick on the third. Looks like he's uh, doing an intercept course on that Quasar. Navigate command, banking the token. Looks like the Gazanti is the speed one um, ship that's going to be locking down the contested outpost objective while, while the ISD and the Quasar both uh, charge at Owen's force. One of the, uh, the risks about doing this kind of deployment where you're crossing by each other is that if you suddenly decide to turn up towards your enemy, you have to be careful about not blocking your opponent, uh, sorry, blocking yourself from, uh, from moving your ships. And I think we saw examples of that in the first and second round of this tournament, uh, where there was some awkward movement by one player that prevented their ships from uh, executing a clean move, in some cases bumping them and keeping them in place uh, in a kill box still. Derek did a squadron command on his Quasar, banked the token, and now he's going to turn towards the left side of the board. So Owen uh, with looks like a navigate command with a lazy bank. Yeah, it definitely looks like he's going to try to uh, use both Corvettes to take out the Quasar. We saw this tactic, this similar tactic uh, that Troy used against Derek in the first round. Engineering command on the ISD, taking the token. Some insurance for later turns. Yeah, really aggressive with the ISD. Actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what, uh, what Derek's uh, target is this game. It almost looks like he's going after the, the MC-75. And it looked like Owen was going to try to set up a double arc. But instead, it looks like he's just going to try to intercept them head on. I think, I think if he made a sharper turn, he would have been able to set up a double arc. But then that also would have meant that he was going to potentially uh, block his number two Corvette from doing any sort of... Uh, significant maneuvers because I think what the Corvette wants to do is it wants to cross over to the other side of the MC-75 and try to come around this, the left side of the uh, the Imperial Star Destroyer. Now it, lo it looked to me like he instead what Owen's doing he's doing a hard turn and he's going to uh, point that ship towards the Quasar. Now one possible issue with that is that even at speed four, he may not be able to escape the front arc of that ISD. So with a quick turn one, we're going into the squadron phase. We're gonna see uh, how Owen sets up his fighter screen to protect his Corvettes as they intercept the Quasar. When you have a, uh, when you have a minimal screen like this, generally the strategy you want to use with fighters is that you, um, you don't want to put them in front of your ships. Rather, you want to put them behind your ships. So the reason for that is uh, many times when you put them in front of your ships, your opponent, uh, depending on how far in front of your ships you put them, your opponent can actually uh, attack those squadrons while staying out of uh, significant flak range. So like, if you have overlapping fields of flak, um, it, like you won't have the same type of overlapping fields of flak if you put them in front of your ships as if you put bet in them between your ships, which is what Owen's doing. And then also, if you put them too far out, uh, it's possible for your opponent to isolate and destroy them one by one. Whereas if you uh, have them hug your ships, sort of like what Owen's doing, uh, you're kind of daring your opponent to commit his forces beyond his flak range. Uh, and engage your squadrons on on your terms, because in this scenario, right, Evan, what Owen is doing is that he wants to, he's going to use his corvettes to take down the quasar, not necessarily his fighters. So if if he keeps his, uh, if if he didn't have his fighters next to his corvette, well then, all Derek could do is um, 
is start bombing those Corvettes with impunity. Now, Derek may stay, still do that, but Owen can punish him for that by uh, engaging him, uh, forcing forcing Derek to commit his intel to either one side of the Corvette or the other, and then uh, coming around on the other side and start picking off those fighters or engaging them. So when you're, when you're playing with a minimal screen, um, your objective is, and I mean, you're going to lose your fighters. You just have to figure out how to delay your opponent's superior squadron force for as long as possible. Quick turn one, and uh, that's 20 points for Derek for being within range one of the objective. Owen's being aggressive with uh, Han Solo. And because Mahler Mythil was peeking, peeking just out of that station, he was able to... Uh, get a full attack with the engagement. Now, the station on the contested outpost doesn't actually heal or obstruct attacks, but it does still count for engagement. That's a really good roll by Han there. Uh, that's exactly the kind of roll you want with a four dice attack uh, against a scatter ace. So with the one accuracy, you lock down the scatter, and dealing three damage, the only thing he has left is brace, which brings him down to one. So now... Any, any damage plus a accuracy will kill Mahler Mythil. So despite all that stuff I said about uh, keeping your squadrons close to your screens, sorry, keeping your squadrons close to your ships, uh, Owens decides to go another way. He's going to instead be very aggressive with his uh, YT-2400s, even going as far as to commanding them in the ship phase despite them having that rogue ability on them. Now I question the um, I question the wisdom of this because by moving your squadron so close towards the enemy, you've now put yourself under overlapping fields of fire from the flak cannons, as well as uh, giving uh, Derek the home field advantage. Now he, Derek can just activate his quasar, jump on your squadrons, eliminate them within a turn, uh, and then start working on your ships. But uh, apparently. Apparently, Derek and Owen playtested this match since they were both from Ottawa, and they came down together. So they have playtested against each other using these lists, and uh, it turns out that uh, Owen did win their last matchup. So we'll see if uh, what I'm saying is holding true. Sorry for leaving you hanging on the commentary here, Victor. I'm no, just looking right. to see if I can find a way to make sure that the uh, objectives are working properly here. Can you get the score up at least for the no. player? Okay. Yeah, as as expected, here comes the counterattack with the squadron command on the Quasar. With the token, that means that we're going to see uh, six squadrons being activated here. So the first attack is looks like it's on Han. Yeah, four, four damage. Yeah, okay, so uh, looks like he's, he's jumping on Han right now. Um, it, apparently he had spent a brace from earlier in the turn, and now all these Sloan activations are making him spend his brace. Yeah, it looks like he's, Han is down to either two or three health now. Sienna Ree is now attacking Han. That's right. Derek on the first one, yeah. yeah. Sorry, everyone. We're back up and running here. We actually have contested output output points. <laughs> because we have it's the scores no longer, up. It's no longer a contested output. No. Uh, I, it was going to... I didn't like... I don't like having the score up if the score right. is not going to be correct. Yeah. So oh, that's one of the YTs coming off the board. Yeah, looks like it. And Han's almost dead too. Uh, Sienna Reed just did a lot of damage to that YT twenty four hundred. Yeah, that YT twenty four hundred has two health left. And Jendin. Okay. Yeah. So Merrick activating, shooting Han solo. And with that flight controller, he gets an extra blue die. And looks like he dealt enough damage to kill Han. So th this, is, this is the danger of pushing all your squadrons uh, forward, right? He, 
he, he, he effectively traded uh, between Han and the YT2400. 20, that's uh, 26 plus 16. That's 36, 42, 42. points. Yeah. yeah, 42 points uh, with not a lot of... Uh, yeah, he didn't get a lot of advantage out of that, right? He maybe dealt some damage to... I think it was Mauler Mythil. It brought him down to one health, but I don't think it was worth it, unfortunately. And now... Uh, now Owen has only one squadron remaining, so I think he's actually killed two YT twenty four hundred. Yes, yeah, that's Mark. You got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's it, it. So it's still possible that uh, it's still possible that um, Owen can still take down the Quasar with the two Corvettes. But now the Sloan squadrons have nothing stopping them from going after. The Corvettes, the GR-75, sorry, not the GR, the MC-75, et cetera. So Corvette number three, which is the Dodonna. flagship with yep. Dodonna, yep. Taking a shot at the Quasar. So uh, an accuracy and a blank, but he's, yeah, going to TRC that to uh, two hits. Locks down the brace, and then the redirect moves it to the far side. So that's no shields on the far side of the, the Quasar now. Oh, and setting up a maneuver. Uh, yeah. yeah, Mahler, in fact, did die. But um, Mahler died, but he traded a bunch of... Like, he traded three of his fighters for it. I don't think it was worth it. Geralt's Honor with... Uh, looks like the Navigate Command. It's going to use it this turn. Looks to be he's in medium range. So he one is. red and one yeah. blue. Yeah. Two damage, going to use the brace. brace here, down to one. Yep, bracing down to one, so he's just going to take one damage on that side. So one shield left on the left side of the Quasar now. Looks like girl run, girls aren't going to eat a rock. Yeah, be, being uh, being reckless here. But he needs to kill that Quasar, I think. But we saw it uh, in, in round one. Yeah. So the crit was a depowered armament. You can't attack at long range. Uh, we saw Derek anticipating opponents going after the Quasar in round one. So it's very likely that he's going to start uh, plugging in squadron commands on his ISD starting this turn, I think. So maneuver on the ISD is taking it. That One shot in the roll. Right? That was the ISD into the Corvette, number four. Out of the front arc towards number two. Yep. Better roll. Locking out the redirect. The evade gets rid of the double on James Light, number two. Yeah, and takes two in the front two. In the front. Yep. I think he might have to go straight here if he doesn't want to swing the end around and bump the uh, Kazanti. He's going to try it anyways. So he's going to bump, do a damage to the Gazanti. Now, on, on the other hand, that does mean that he's not in range. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah I was just going to check. It's been a while. The MC-75 doesn't have uh, any red die out of the front arc anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Could have moved safely. So not really an advantage. So Corvette 2 shooting 2 at the front of the ISD. Looks like an accuracy and a hit. Yeah. I think he's making this shot only because the Quasar's out of range. Otherwise, I don't think. Eh. I mean, he's going to follow it up next turn with uh, an MC-75 hit, I'm assuming. With Dodonna and APTs, he can probably land something nasty on the, uh, the ship. Now, but it, the, the thing here is, like, the MC-75 was probably going to get into close range on the ISD if the ISD hadn't swung around and bumped the uh, Kazandi. That bump there might have actually been right. uh, a useful move for uh, Derek. Devil John says slice of tools would be handy versus Derek. Actually, uh, round one, his opponent had Cham Sindulla, which is really good against dedicated carrier ships. It's just that his opponent forgot to use it on a critical moment, and I think that cost him the game. Didn't he also use slice tools on uh, his ISD? Didn't the uh, didn't yeah. the transport like jump yeah. out in front? Yeah, he had slicer tools and Cham. The Cham was yeah, they were different ships, but yep. And Derek still won. Derek still won, yes. Yep. 
Yeah, I forgot how nimble those uh, Corvettes are. Yeah, MC-75. Is that a squadron command? Oh, no, it's a Navigator. No, it's a navigator. Yeah. yeah, speed, speed. Uh, sorry, there... Yeah. Victor's going to go over. So, generally what would happen here is he'd locked in his movement, he would take the move, but he had realized that his opponent had actually not set one of his speed dials correctly, so he needed to double check before he did his move. With the ISD only moving one, he was more comfortable making this move. Yeah, I mean, that's that's understandable, right? Like, you, you're making moves based on the information that you have of your opponent, so if it's... Uh, the information is uh, misrepresented, even if it's unintentional. I think it's only fair to let them reassess in light of that. That looks like a double arc, I think. On the, I, they on measured the it. I think it looked like it was out. Oh, the, it looks like it was out of the double arc? Yeah, it was uh, tough to know for sure. I mean, it almost looks like it intersects, uh, but not at close range, like further down the side of the ice. But that's possible. So this is, I guess this is squadron. Yeah, it's a squadron command, squadron phase rather. The YT twenty four hundred attacks Colonel Jendon. Uh, one more round of the outpost for uh, Derek. Yeah. So we're on turn three now. Top of turn three. So despite Owen losing a bunch of squadrons, uh, all Owen needs to do is take out the uh, take out the Quasar and the ISD, and he wins because he tables Derek. So his first activation is concentrate fire on Geralt's honor. Now they're trying to figure out if the shot is obstructed because I think he's trying to shoot his rear, I suppose. Yeah, another judge color. Just they're trying to say if uh, the dot is over the obstacle underneath. So if it is just clarifying that it doesn't matter that the dot actually sits over the thing; it's where it comes out the front of the card. So unobstructed shot here with uh, the hammerhead. Front to side. Yeah, this is this is Owen's plan here. He's gonna he's gonna deal as much damage to that uh, vulnerable yeah. concentrated fire here. Yeah, that vulnerable quasar, and then just smash it with Geralt's honor here. Oh, here comes external, external racks, racks. Yeah. Ooh. Five damage, a good number uh, against a ship versus a brace. So brace and redirect both. Yep. So I think that's all the shields gone on the, the three front quadrants of the, uh, the Quasar now. He's just, just going to ram here, I think. I, I would ram. Wait, I think uh, he's just trying to decide what speed he can ram at. Well, that, and now he's thinking about if he, if he can actually do the ram. But he does have a nav token, so he can do it if he wants. I mean, this, this is basically trading Geralt's Honor for... Yeah, it, it basic, basically trading the... Carol's honor for the chance of killing the Quasar, which is fine, right? I mean, if if your strategy is uh, to hell with the contested outposts, I just want to kill your big ships and I win. So using Dodonna's ability, and he's going to decide which of those uh, crits he's going to choose. Crew Panic he chooses. Yeah. I believe Crew Panic is something to do with defense tokens. You can't you can't ready exhausted defense tokens. And now Evan, yeah, uh, you yeah. discard your uh, command dial. Oh, it's discard your command dial. Or you have to, you have to reveal. If you do reveal it, you take a damage, or you discard it. Right, right, okay. Uh, so Owen actually ended up uh, getting a, a thruster fisher, which is if he changes his speed, he takes one damage. Eh. Uh, another crit that I don't think he cares that much about. At this I don't point. think he cares at all either. Derek remembering his suppressor ability on his Gazanti. So now he's just deciding which one to flip over here. Uh, redirect gets exhausted, which uh, turns on Avenger. However, I mean, that Avenger shooting through, through an obstruction, and it's at long range, so he's only getting one red dice. This is a Gazanti activation. Yeah, passing uh, the nav command, yep. nav token over to the uh, Quasar. Accuracy at the front. One damage to the front of that MC-75. If, if we're wrong and uh, Owen does have the double arc, 
then I think it's the correct play is not to move the MC-75. But if you don't, I would. I think I would rather move the MC-75 now and get that guaranteed double arc and then force uh, Derek to stay in that position when you bump into him. Yeah, I think he wants to see if he can get rid of that Quasar before it activates this round. Yeah. With the, uh, was it number three I think he's activating? Yeah. It looks like, uh, it looks like he does have him double arced and the front is not obstructed. Yeah, the side is. Yep. Yeah, concentrate, concentrate fire. fire. All right. Going all in on that Quasar. And that, correct me if I'm wrong, that Quasar hasn't activated this turn yet, right? It has not. No. Going to concentrate fire on that. Yep. Three damage. Yeah, he's going to tier two a double. This might force uh, Derek to uh, discard the brace. That's one uh, shield off the back and a hull. Ooh, front arc shooting. Accuracy. So one one crit, which uh, triggers the Donna again. So eight cards and no structural damage. I, I mean, I don't think the structural damage is necessarily what he's looking for here, because he's... That doesn't kill the ship. Uh, it's it's likely that the next attack would kill the ship, even if he didn't get a structural. So, so thrust control malfunction was the uh, was the critical, which is the last uh, the last yaw joint is reduced by one when you're moving. Which is I don't think not really that relevant in this scenario because uh, there's not there's not really anywhere for that quasar to go. Owen's gonna try to bank and come around to the rear of the ISD. Uh, surrounding it, setting up his uh, second attack run once the Quasar goes down. Remember, all all uh, Owen needs to do is kill the ISD after the Quasar goes down, and he will very likely win this fight. But the bigger question is, is he able to do that quick enough so that he can secure that 8-3 or more victory uh, to become the sword champion? Because that's what really this hinges on. Uh, simply getting a victory is not good enough. He needs almost total victory in order to become the champion here. Suppressor activating again, which uh, triggers the, the redirect. Actually, that's another reason why I think Owen's not um, moving his MC-75, because if he were to move before the ISD, he would trigger the suppressor, right. which would probably flip the brace over, which would uh, allow Derek to do a huge damage. So he's taking the damage for um, yep. crew panic. To use his dial. Yeah. Actually, now that, that, now that I think about it... Engineering. Okay. Engineering? Okay. Oh, was that engineering? engineering? No, that's squadron, I think. Uh, oh. Cer certainly looks like a squadron. Yeah, I mean, well, there's no other reason to do anything other than squadron, I think. How he, runner in on... Uh, yep. How runner going after the YT-2400. With the flight controllers, gets an extra blue die. And, yep, he gets, she gets sworn because she is in, uh, that YT-2400 is engaged with one of his other fighters. That looked like three damage there, I think. Yeah. So I think, I think maybe send in Sienna Ray, uh, and you're very likely to finish off that YT-2400. Then you can start going to work on, uh, maybe Geralt's Honor, I think. That's Dengar coming in. <clears throat> Three plus one. Uh, plus, plus one, actually, because uh, Dengar does have Swarm, so that's five dice. Yeah, Swarm reroll, that's going to be enough to kill that. So that's, uh, that's it for Owen's squadrons. So that looks like a, it probably is going to take um, the 9-2 uh, victory off the table. So if, if Owen tables Derek, let's say nothing else changes, right? Yeah. That's uh, 400 to 114. Yeah. That's a 9-2. So, no. Yeah, because you, you, yeah, you, you have 286. Yeah, yeah. What was it 220, right? Yeah. What was the threshold for eight? Yeah. So he would need 181 points, Derek, in order to secure the 7-4. 160. 160, yeah. 161, I guess.
Oh, no, sorry, 260, sorry, 260. So, so 80 points left. <laughs> Could have got them mixed up at some point. Thrust control malfunction, the yaw thing. I think that's going to bite him in the ass. I don't, I don't know. If he doesn't need to. It, it, he's only bumping into his design, so it doesn't oh, take a damage, yeah, yeah. right? So okay, true. it's actually useful. So no damage on the Gazanti. Yeah, it is. Oh, it, is does, oh, yeah. it is a double arc. Ooh. Yeah. The conversation Owen was having there was that he was saying, well, if I don't activate my MC-75 now, it's possible that you can turn in uh, with your ISD and uh, get out. Like, if you turn in, I could lose a double arc. But then he said that if he does that, he might land on debris field. I don't know if I would be willing to take that risk. I think I would just take the double arc but then again the threat of the suppressor is still there so yeah billy walker talks about how the new armada campaign is supposed to be based around the executor i've heard that i've heard that rumor too um i know i know the executor was something that they've been rumored to have been working on since wave two i think it is so who knows that could be the announcement that we're going to hear about next week so get some shield back with engineering isd with the front arc attack on the mc-75 no, he's, he's going to do the side first. So the crit was uh, coolant discharge. You can only attack a ship once. That's actually important. Because I think that the way that thing is set up, he was going to do a front arc attack on the ISD and a side arc attack to finish off the Quasar, but yeah. now he, can, he, only, he has to choose one or the other. This is the front arc attack on the MC-75. I see one accuracy, but um, Owen does have ECM on his ship. Yeah, with six damage. Six damage, you can drop it to three if he wants. He also has damage control officer, which is funny. I mean, it's not going to be relevant, I think, in this game, but he's going to go for leading shots. Yeah, there's no point in having just one accuracy. You might as well re-roll it. And, yeah, that's uh, five. It, yeah. So no change. Yep. So now he doesn't even have to use his ECM. He's just going to go ahead and use the brace and the redirect. And he can feel safe doing it because all those fighters have activated, so he's not going to be in danger of losing that brace. Yeah, this is the turning in now. I think he's lost a yep. double arc. He definitely has. So he uses his engineering token to move two shields from the back to the front. Yeah, that, losing that double, that second arc is... Yeah, I might have been even willing to risk that suppressor Avenger shot Yeah, uh, because of that. Ooh. Yeah, he's, th he's thinking about using external racks here. So that's six damage right now. External racks, even if it deals one extra hit, that's going to be with a brace that reduces to four. He does have APT. Can we use yeah. Rack? Oh, yeah, he has Brunson too. Yeah, I, I, think, I think this is the correct play to go for it. Three rolls for Ordnance Experts. Okay, that's seven damage, I think. No, that's nine damage. Brunson's it down to seven. And then Brace, now you go Brace down to four. Using his APTs. Yep. So he gets a face up. But uh, Derek does have to commit his defense tokens before he gets to see what the, the crit is. Noted Donna, though, so... 
Oh, that's brutal. That's projector misaligned. That's like the worst uh, crit. <laughs> that's, that's literally the crit he probably would have wanted to see the most. So projector wow. misaligned is uh, you have to, the, the hull zone with the most shields loses all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens before the rest of the damage is dealt? Yeah. So, really bad. I mean, that, that, that's basically the dream scenario when you yeah. APT a big ship before you've actually dealt any damage to it. That's uh, crazy. And, yeah, he, because he can only redirect three, now he's dealt, uh, yeah, he's dealt another to the hull. So it's two damage now and two zones missing shields entirely. Yep. So that leaves him with, I don't even know if he has full shields on the other yep. sides. And speed three with a token and a dial. I think, yeah, he, he's going to go for the ram. I don't even think he can get... I don't even think he can not ram. Just go for it. So he, he will actually slow down the speed too. And then rams it. So that's another... Uh, so at the end of turn three, that's another token for Derek. That's going to bring him up to 207 points. Uh, he just needs to secure... Uh, what what would we say? A margin of 260 points? Yeah, so if he kills the other yeah. Corvette, it's enough. Well, Owen has to also not lose any... Or sorry, Owen has to also not kill anything else. Right? Is that what we determine? Or even if... Are we deciding even if Owen uh, wipes his opponent? So if Owen wipes his opponent, and he has less than 140 margin... Right. 200, he, 240 or 140? 140. Okay. Because 140, 140 is what you get for... An 8-3, right? Right, right. That's the, that's the, so that's the minimum margin Owen needs in order to win. So we're on the top of turn four. I, I really do think that the first activation Owen needs has to be that Corvette. You, no, you gotta, I, I mean, you got, I think you got to make a... Uh, well. You activate the Corvette, you kill the, um, you kill the Quasar. I think that's what you have to do. Yeah, this is a nav... Nav on the. I'm gonna hope this is a Corvette here. And I guess that because you have to also get your Corvette yeah. out of yep. death. Yeah. So he just needs to deal two damage. Oh, this is Girl's Honor. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's enough to kill it oh, because sorry, the forgot, brace is gone already. Gone yeah, I forgot that he had it too. <laughs> My bad. Sorry, hold on. All right. Back, back to turn three. Yep. So Quasar down. Uh, let's see if he's if he's able to save. Uh, yeah, let's see if he's able to save uh, Girl's Honor from dying here. Ooh, will that kill the? Uh, is Andy? Uh, yeah. Does it? Yeah, because of the damage from. Uh, oh, oh no only, no! Only if it hit. That's close. I. <laughs> Yeah, he can't fit it in. So, yeah, he can't fit it in. So it looks like, it looks like the Gazanti dies. That's actually huge because, because um, it's it's possible that Derek dialed in a squadron command on the Gazanti as well. Yeah. So now the only ship that Derek has is the ISD. Um, Wow, Derek is uh, <laughs> clairvoyant. Oh no! What? Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's a squadron command. It looks like he also had a. Uh, looks like he also had a repair token, I think. So he's gonna get four squadron activations. Yeah. Ooh. So let's think about this. What is uh, what does Derek need in order to to secure this win? We said we he said he needed two sixty, right? He needed yeah. a score of two sixty. Either kills the Corvette or Cor Corvette, the MC seventy five, or both the transport and, or the transport and. Uh, so if he kills Girls Honor and the transport, that's enough, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, Girls transport. I don't think oh, this is okay, a good idea. On. No. No. Uh, sorry. Yeah. No. Killing. Uh, killing the Corvette alone is not enough either. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just turn it to round four. 
Thank you, Jahangir358. Uh, yeah, he's going after he's going after the MC75. Uh, I mean, I I get it because he's he's trying to he's trying to exhaust the brace token. Yeah, he's tr there. It is. Yeah, he's trying to exhaust the brace token so he can uh, uh, Avenger Avenger the the ship. So four activations. He's already used Merrick twice with Jendin. Third activation. Yeah, it looks like Sienna Ray is going to attack Girl's Honor. Looks like one hit. Redirecting it to the rear. And now we have the fourth activation. This is going to be close. Yeah. It really comes down to how well the uh, the front arc roll on the the MC-75 is. From Derek, that is. Yep. So, yep. Uh, Owen throwing away his redirect to uh, move the damage to the front. So side to front with the with the uh, <clears throat> with the ISD. Looks like close range. So four dice. Oh boy. Leading shots. Yeah, because I don't think two damage was enough to kill it. I think there was still some not uh, shields left on the front. Yeah. So leading shots, and I think that is enough to kill it. Perhaps. Yeah. Yep. So Carol's Honor is down. However, that's still not enough to secure a win. Uh, no. Sorry. He's in 11 yeah. points. So any other ship now? Yep. Any other ship now. Here comes the big one. He get, he takes this one down. Then That's going to be uh, it's going to be Derek. It's going to win. Yeah. So Avenger, well, yeah. he can't redirect because he has no redirect token. He can't brace because of Avenger. He's going to use leading shots here to reroll. Oh, oh man, is... there we go. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight damage with the crit. So it looks like... Yeah. So with three three shields on the front of the ship, he loses all three of them. Then he's going to take five more hull damage. But with that contained token, he doesn't take a face up. Yeah. Uh oh. So now he's at seven. Yeah. So there's two HP left in the 75. Now, Owen, because he's first player, he gets to attack basically twice before the ISD gets to attack again. Right. Yeah. So you go with the Corvette first. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because. Because it's possible. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. Matter. Engineering. Wow. That's huge. Four engineering points. I would just spread the shields around, honestly, because even even if um, even if Owen kills the uh, ISD, he needs to make sure he survives until the end of the turn. Even if he gets tabled. If he somehow veers close enough to the squadrons, even after uh, all the ships are dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, Owen still wins, yeah. right? Because he tables, uh, right. Right. He so tables Derek. He's but better He's better off here. Although, he could get the station. Yeah. Is two enough to get to the station? Well, the station doesn't heal. Oh, yeah, right. Huh. Right? N and non-contested outpost. Oh, boy. Yeah. Brunson. Oh, interestingly enough. What's that? If he, if he does kill the uh, ISD... He yep. will score this round's contested output, outpost. Yes. So that's 15 extra points that uh, Derek... Oh, that's needs. true. Yeah, yeah. He does... So now it looks like there's no shields left. So that would that would, that would would mean that the uh, killing the transport wouldn't have been enough. Yeah. Yeah. So four damage on the ISD. Looks like the only shields left on that ship are the shields on the rear. Here, here comes a ram. So that's uh, he did heal damage cards, right? With the uh, engineering. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, did it was his roll just terrible? 
Oh, Owen's role? Yeah. Well, he had um, Owen has Brunson to cancel an attack, oh, and yeah. he didn't get an APT yeah. black crit, right? So, yeah, concentrate fire with uh, Corvettes. Oh, add a blue concentrate fire, and then a TRC as well. And yeah, TRC is going to end up with four damage. Yeah, and if Derek, yeah, and if if Derek uses a Brunt, uh, sorry, if Derek uses a brace here, he's going to have to throw it away. This is tough. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, the math is getting complicated. He's going to ECM contain. Yep. And he's going to oh. redirect. Oh, he no, did have damage still. Or sorry, he yep. did have uh, shields, I guess. Oh, but he's overlapping the station, so Owen will score the contested outpost this turn. But that only puts him on. Right, right. But as we said before, but if like Derek, next turn he Derek, Derek, kills him and then goes on the station, he'll get those points back, right? Yeah, but Owen's going to score it this turn, right? Is he? Well, no, no. It, he, no one, no one will get it because they're both three command ships at distance one. Oh okay. no! Sorry, not oh, even three oh. command, two command. Uh, it looks like they they missed a shield, I guess. Yeah, they're sorry. We're responding to them talking into our ears. Right. Yeah. Uh, they were just saying that they missed uh, a shield. So, is the transport activated the other turn? I don't think so. Oh, no, so. Right. Uh, I don't think anything is in range one. So I think Derek does get the extra points here. Let's all get, well, we can just let it, we don't have to do all the math. We don't have to guess. No, no, I'm, I'm saying that he, he does, you're right, he does get it. However, if Owen can kill the ISD next turn yeah. and then get within distance one of that, he'll yeah. get he'll get the contest up with that turn. But I don't know if they'll be doing the math quite as closely. No, I mean, they don't have the numbers in front of them. I don't think, uh, I don't, and it seems like they're, they're really intensely focused on the game too, so I don't think it... Yeah, I don't. I don't think it necessarily uh, is. Was that a that was a bump occurring okay. to them? Yeah, this is just. Uh, so that was a bump with the with transport. It. Yep. So it takes a damage. Uh, it's gonna take care of some squadron activations here. I mean, it all comes down to one roll, right? Owen, Owen's chances are slim. Like he. He can mathematically do it, but they're slim. Because he's got to get through Brunson. He's got to get through the Brace token, which has ECM. So he's kind of guaranteed for it. Ooh. Nab, nab on the 75. I guess that was, uh, yeah, that was a rare, that was a, sorry, a repair token. I guess that was passed to him from the GR75 from last turn. But it is a nav command for the, uh, yeah, for the MC75. So really that comes could put him. Uh, uh, can he get around and swing? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty decent. I mean, even actually, I can't tell if that's. Uh, uh, is that two double hits there? No, it's just one double. There's just single points over on the, on the left hand side. I think he's trying to figure out. No, it looks like two two double hits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was important because he needed two double. Black double hits yeah. to get through the Brunson. Passenger failure? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't redirect or regenerate shields from a zone that uh, has no shields left. Like his friend? Yeah. Three hull. I don't know if he had very many shields left, anyways. What is that? That's six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no. That's one damage. With. With, with the ram, that's one damage short of yeah. killing it. So someone pointed out, I think Galactic said uh, he should have rammed with the Corvette last turn. He's absolutely right. It, would, it wouldn't have mattered. Why not? Uh, because he would have nothing in one, range one of the station. He wouldn't have been able to make enough points. No, no. What I'm saying is last turn, mm -hmm. if he, instead of going this way, he rams the ISD. Yep. Then he does this. That kills the ISD. Then he can move into the station, which would get oh, him the points. Oh, did he? Yeah. I thought he had uh, ISDs. I, 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 thought, I thought he needs two more damage. 
So it would have been one from the Corvette, and then he would have could have rammed here. Oh, no, no, you're right, you're right. Because if, so, if he rams with the yeah, with this, then he's not close yeah. enough. You're right, you're right. Yep. Damn, that was close. I don't know that he can survive all so, of this uh, fire. Uh, j just to put things into perspective, Owen can still win this game, right? Yeah, like he can win this game. The all the all the discussion that we've been doing so far has been whether or not he can actually win the the, the tournament itself. All right, up to eight now. So braces that one point of damage. America goes again. He's dead now. So it doesn't necessarily decide the game, but it does decide the tournament. We'll see if uh, Derek can table his opponent here. Looks uh, like there's a pretty good chance just to seeing if he's got two arcs yeah. or just one. So Galactic, yeah, he, he's right. The, if he did ram, the Corvette would have been distance one of the station, so he would have actually... Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So the, I guess the question is what? Whether the ISD can side arc and shoot the front? Yes. It looks like, it looks like the yeah, answer is they're yes. They're saying yes. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Oh, jeez. So close. That's fatal to the, uh, yeah. Well, so, I mean, Owen, Owen was, what, maybe one? Uh, one damage away. Yeah, one damage away from actually winning. Or one damage like in it, a different it move. Yeah, it really, like, it really did hinge on one move that not only determined the outcome of this game, but the entire tournament, too. So, yeah, uh, not perfect. I don't think I have the logic for tabling an opponent. So should this, be four, this it should a, be 480 for Derek. Uh, well, this is a 10-1 10 victory for Derek. Yeah, no, no, right? but it's, yeah. it should be 480 to 115. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but it was a very interesting game. Yeah, uh, Derek. so Derek had 20 points going into this round. Uh, Owen had 16 points as well. So uh, Derek was... Anything, anything less than an 8-3 victory for Owen would have resulted in Derek winning because the next, uh, the next highest points was third place. I think at 14 third, third points. Third and fourth were both at 14. Yeah, 14 so. points. So, yeah. So, so whatever, really, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Really well played by Derek. Actually, uh, Derek has been a player that uh, all the major tournaments in Toronto. He has him and his friends have come down from Ottawa, and uh, I think this. This tournament has actually been a breakout tournament for him because he's played some tough competition. And uh, congratulations to Derek for winning the tournament, being the store champion for 401 Games' last uh, tournament in the downtown location.